freaking out right now. It's okay. Oh, I can't breathe. This week on Married at First Sight was a big one, with the show's first ever second wedding. We started with Michael preparing for a special day once more, weeks after being left at the altar. And while there were some nerves, he was ready to meet his match and say, I do. Having to face that again is super scary, but I know how I want my life to be. I know I want to spend it with the person I love who wants to lighten my life, who wants to be, you know, someone that brings me happiness and brings me joy, even at first glance. Chloe was similarly excited, but she told her family that her biggest fear was that her groom wouldn't feel the same way about her that she would about him. What if I fall head over heels in love for this man and he's like, she's not it. That's really scary. And so if, if he gets out there and decides that this was not the journey he intended, uh, I'm already committed. And as she finished getting ready, she was feeling some nerves and emotion. I think what's so scary for me is I've put every ounce of faith into believing with my whole heart that this is my journey. Okay. Hey, let's okay. get walking. Let's okay. Go. Stop thinking about it. Okay. Oh. And now that it's all happening, it's just hard for me to let go of the idea that I should be controlling things. I just can't breathe. <laughs> but once Chloe and Michael saw each other, they were all smiles. She started her walk down the aisle, and it was clear there were sparks. The two shared some sweet vows and sealed their marriage with a kiss. Michael, you may now kiss your bride, Chloe. May I? Yes! <laughs> when they got a chance to talk after the ceremony, Michael told Chloe she was just what he asked the experts for. I would say there are three core tenets that I communicated, which I'm very confident you possess. Let's hear them. Intelligence, silliness, and sweetness. I just wanted everything to kind of like revolve around that. I mean, did they tell you it was me in advance? <laughs> he then revealed to Chloe that he had almost gotten married at first sight before. The woman that they had matched me up with at the time felt like she couldn't go through with it. But I just want you to know that our journey is our journey. I don't want you to think that you're receiving like a broken man or there's any like residual from that first experience. Like there's none of that. Like this is uniquely ours and for all intents and purposes, I'm, I'm here to experience this with you. What is meant for us will never, ever, ever pass us. Chloe then got to meet the other couples who came. And during the reception, she told the girls her one worry about being Michael's second bride. And hearing what happened with Michael the first time, I'm a little concerned because I'm wondering why the experts didn't see me as the fit the first time. They quickly eased her concern, letting her know she's meant to be here. I would never think about it as being overlooked. It's so cliche, but everything happens for a reason. I think this is why you're here now. That's why Sucks when you said you weren't supposed time. to be here, I was like, no, you're supposed to be here. Yeah, it worked it out exactly a long minute how to it get here. To. Michael then told Chloe's loved ones about his first wedding, and they were impressed by his strength in getting through that. Michael's friends then asked Chloe for her take on what had happened to him. I have been really focused on his feelings in what would have been a really traumatic experience. And I'm glad they kept me in the dark because I probably would not have continued. But I believe wholeheartedly that the experts got it right with us. My only fear is that he hasn't sat with it. She was not meant for him, but it doesn't mean it didn't hurt a lot. Michael's friends also asked her if she wants kids. Do you want to have kids? No. No? So for me, um, there are 450,000 kids in foster care. I feel like instead of putting a bun in this oven, I can love the buns that have come out of everybody else's ovens. Does he know that? Yeah. We have not yet talked about, look at him. Yeah. Look how handsome he is. <laughs> no, we haven't talked about that. I don't really want my own. And it seems like Michael will be a match on that front. I haven't had a personal emotional desire for children, but I'm interested in the fact that I may be in love with someone so much that if she wants children, I wouldn't want to prevent that from happening. That makes it easier. You know? So fostering in a, might be an option? Fostering, adopting, having children of our own. Like, to me, the method is agnostic. If we felt that the next way to continue to fulfill our relationship was to raise children together, I don't, I don't oh care how that happens. Oh my gosh, I can't. Michael and Chloe then left the reception and settled into their hotel room to wrap up their first day as husband and wife. Good oh, good night, husband. Yes, good night, <laughs> wife. Not everyone was able to be there for Michael's big day. Becca and Austin sadly couldn't come since they were visiting Austin's grandma in Pennsylvania. 
and Cameron wasn't there as he was recovering from his heart procedure. Claire, who is separated from Cameron, gave him a call while she was at the wedding, but he didn't answer. Hi, Cameron, I'm just calling to see how you're doing. Um, I just wanted to say, hey, um, I'm at the wedding right now. I miss you. This is definitely not the same without you. Um, and I just want to make sure you're doing okay. And so just give me a call back when you can. It's not urgent. I just checking in. She said being at the wedding reminded her how the experts wanted her and Cameron in each other's lives, just like Michael and Chloe. The difference is, is that we are paired in such a beautiful friendship that it's just, it's for me, it's like, it gets, makes me emotional talking about how much it's grown and how much better it's gonna get. Brennan and Emily were the only still together couple at the wedding, though they referenced how rocky things have been while talking about Michael and Chloe's upcoming honeymoon. Excited for their honeymoon, you know? You're excited for their honeymoon? Yeah, I hear about it and, you know, they're gonna learn a lot about each other and, you know, we're here to and support them. that's where things go downhill right after. And maybe we can, you know, help them, you know, give them, you know. What, what advice would you give them pre-honeymoon, knowing what you know now? Prepare for the honeymoon stage, because it will end. No, I mean, as long as their feelings are still the same, then the honeymoon stage may never end. Their night ended with Emily asking Brennan to get on the dance floor with her, but he said no, and he stood around while she danced, then left on his own. Lauren and Orion were also at the wedding, marking their first time seeing each other since they told everyone they were getting a divorce. During the reception, they had a chance to clear the air. Lauren told Orion she's not harboring any animosity toward him, and she said she had some new insight from therapy about how him saying she didn't have his back triggered old relationship wounds. I am carrying hurt from my past two relationships of being told, like, you're not enough, you're not doing enough, and no matter what you do, So then you're not you be probably enough. overhearing me say my wife doesn't have my back probably hit. It did. And something it, that. That wasn't just that. It was that, but it was also like. I was a kid, you know, I watched my, just the women in my family, you know, they got cheated on, they got yelled at, just, and I watched it happen in front of me. You know, I was like five years old the first time it happened. Got a little worse, worse, worse through the years. But I mean, just through all of those years, it was just like, I don't ever want to have just an elevated voice in conversation, you know? And so that was something, um, you know, she brought to light for me that, you know, I was being stubborn on, but in a way that was protecting myself. After their conversation, they made peace with a hug. I'm sorry, but can I have a hug? Of course. Yeah. You know, I love hugs. <laughs> Genuine, just, I'm glad you're doing that. Okay.